I'd like to call this regular board meeting to order at 7 o'clock. Invocation, moment of silence, Amanda Pickett. So last week, we celebrated Staff and Teacher Appreciation Week, and Sunday was a celebration of mothers. I want to take a moment to thank all the women in our community that helped shape the lives of our students. To me, this is a blessing that we can call on others to lift us up when needed. The words of the amazing Maya Angelou say it best. I'm going to do my best to channel her energy, her spirit, um, and her words. There's an African song from the 19th century, and it says, when it looked like the sun will not shine anymore, God put a rainbow in the clouds. Imagine, I have had so many rainbows in my clouds. I've had a lot of clouds, but I've also had so many rainbows. And the thing to do, it seems to me, is to prepare yourself so that you can be a rainbow in somebody else's cloud. Somebody who may not look like you, may not call God the same name you call God, if they call God at all. They might not eat the same dishes prepared the way you do. They may not dance your dances or speak your language, but be a blessing to somebody. That is what Dr. Angelou thought, and that's what I think too. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fire evacuation announcement, double doors um, at the back of the room, head out, go to the parking lot, double doors to the side, your left, my left, your right, go down the stairs and out to the parking lot. Roll call, Kathy. Mrs. Pickett. Here. Mr. Ryder. Here. Mr. Ungeier. Here. Dr. Kalman. Here. Mrs. Cushman. Here. Mr. Hamry. Here. Mrs. Acree? Here. Here. Mr. LeBlanc? Madam Chair? Here. Mr. LeBlanc will be joining us shortly. He is at a baseball game. He's coaching. Um, no board guests. No, I was going to say, so for this evening, we're going to do a little something a little different with signing up for public comment. <laughs> Kathy's going to put the sign-up sheet out now. You have to sign up yourself. You cannot sign up other guests. If you want to come in and sign up, you have to be here in time to sign up. Only sign up yourself. If the allotted time comes up and we say to you, your time is up and you continue to talk, I'm going to recess the meeting because we're not doing this and public comment will end. Further, I had to stop the meeting six times two weeks ago due to the crowd calling out. I won't do that again. I'll call for a recess and then we can adjourn. Six is way, six times too many. I'd also like to remind my board members that when audience comes up here, we cannot speak back and forth to them. We will have our time to respond during board member comments. There are no board guests. Uh, superintendent's report, Mr. Longhi. Yes, good evening, everyone. Uh, Mr. Dresick is coming. Uh, if you haven't heard, he's actually down at the Bushnell in Hartford. Uh, it's our Teacher of the Year uh, ceremony. He actually has two teachers to walk across the stage uh, due to COVID. They backed up two years. So um, I think that's going to be ending soon, and hopefully it doesn't speed, but he's head heading up here. So he'll be here soon. So I will do my best. So um, uh, Chris asked me to read a statement that he put out. He wanted to give you just a brief update on the Alliance district status, which I'll do. Uh, and then uh, the rest of the time, uh, he has a write-up about the COVID update, uh, what's happening in our schools. We'll try to give you our best update with that. So Alliance district status, as of today, uh, Chris still has not received the official notification from the state that Enfield has been accepted as an Alliance district. However, uh, he was invited to a meeting next Monday where he expects to find out more inf information. Uh, because of this, uh, he will not have a formal report on our status until next week. Uh, once he receives confirmation, he will notify the board. So he was invited to uh, a phone call uh, to go over this. So it looks like it may happen, um, but he wants to wait until it's absolutely official. So hopefully next meeting he can have more information. Okay, so COVID. So obviously this has been taking uh, up the entire district's time lately. So let me just give you an update on this. 
So as you all know by now, Enfield is getting hit pretty hard by COVID at the moment. The last resort obviously is closing a school. However, when staffing levels get too low, that of the safety of our students is in question. Um, really, we have no choice but to close the school down, and that's what happened at Barnard last week. Uh, Barnard was a unique situation because all of the special programs we have in that school, so sending just anyone to cover was not feasible because of the needs of many of our students in that building. At the present time, we have multiple schools that are teetering on closing. It's very close, uh, to be honest with you, with a lot of our schools. Uh, we're doing everything we can to keep our buildings open. Uh, we're even recruiting college kids to, for support. I know uh, Mr. Drezek had three or four. I'm begging my daughter to come down. And Tina, I know your daughter, she's not a college student anymore, but she even came in. We're literally, literally grabbing anyone we can find to go in to cover lunches, cover classrooms, just to spell teachers, things like that. Um, and like I said, um, Mr. Drezek had his oldest daughter come to work this week. Um, I don't think she's too happy about it, but she was there. Uh, to clear up any confusion, although we all hoped COVID was over, uh, when someone tests positive, they are out for at least five days. So I, that's a question I even get at home, or like I went to a dinner party on Saturday and asking about work and saying, unfortunately, COVID's coming through. And they're saying, well, I, I kind of thought it was over. Remember, we still have to follow CDC guidelines. So that's the issue. It's a staffing issue. Uh, so even if you don't have symptoms and you uh, are exposed and you test positive, you still have to be out for at least least five days. And that's that's the issue we're running into. Um, also, uh, you may have heard, maybe not, that uh, Mr. Dresick instituted uh, mask wearing for all staff, but not students, just for the staff. Uh, he did this in order to preserve the staff. Really, it's a survival thing now to ask staff to keep their masks on. Um, there are still guidelines in place that if a person is a close contact, but they are masked, they can continue to work as long as they test negative and are masked. So that's been saving us, to be honest with you. That's That right now is keeping our schools open is because of that. Uh, Mr. Dresick did this as a last ditch effort to keep our buildings open. Uh, and I'm sure uh, he'll address this later and certainly to let every know, everyone know once this little wave passes, obviously we'll remove that for our staff. Um, as for the last day of school, so this is kind of the third thing I'm going to talk about, the last day of school. So if you remember, uh, you guys already waived the 181st day for JFK. If you remember, we needed to do that because they needed time to move with construction. So JFK, you've already removed that 100, 181st day. Um, when Chris comes back, uh, if he's able to, he is going to ask that you waive the 181st day for Barnard as well tonight. He's hoping you can do that. Uh, and therefore, their 180th day would be June 24th. If not, the last day for Barnard would be June 27th. OK, so I just want everyone to kind of know where we are. There, there's a gap because the 24th of Friday, and then Monday's the 27th. Uh, this is important to realize the state requires at least 180 days of in-person learning a school year to be completed by June 30th. This is why this is important. At the current time, there are no exceptions. And we're asking, trust me, we're asking constantly. This schedule only leaves five days for cancellation for everyone except Barnard and four days for Barnard, minus any action from the state. If we are forced to close for COVID, weather, or any other reasons, and things do happen, uh, we would have to consider weekend classes for students to meet our statutory requirement for 180 days. Again, let's give the worst case scenario up front. He, uh, Mr. Dresick is scheduled to be here by the time board action is required on the waiver for Barnard. Um, so if you have further questions, he can address that. He knows uh, about the waivers much more than I do. Um, and that is all I have. That concludes the assistant superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Longhi. Just a reminder, um, you must be an Enfield resident to participate in the audience portion of the meeting. We ask that you state your name and address. Board members cannot respond back to you during this portion of the meeting. The board members can respond during their board member comments if they choose to do so. We cannot respond to student or personnel matters. We strongly ask that you refrain from personalities. We strongly ask that you refrain from yelling out during audiences or board members during their comments. I'm going to allow four minutes tonight. Peter Janitis.
Peter Genitis, three farmstead circle. Oh, we get more than three minutes. I only need about two. <laughs> um, I was a teacher in town for, for 38 years, and I can honestly say I absolutely love teaching, as I think most teachers who go into teaching will have that love affair working with kids. All don't, but I know I did, and, and uh, most do. I spent six years, I, I did that because I love teaching. I was on the board here for six years. I thought I could make some change. I think I influenced some board members as to what are the things that are going on behind the scenes in the classrooms and with administrators and, and that such. But uh, it didn't work out, particularly the last, last term. The board wants to talk about board business. I'm going to give you some business I think you could, I would love you to look into. And that's modified classes. Kids who are two or more years below reading level. There's a lot of them in there. Yet they don't qualify for special ed. They just have a reading problem. And they did, just when I was getting out of teaching, that's when they did away with the modified classes. Studies show this, that, and the other thing. Modified classes aren't meant for all teachers. I think you gotta be a special breed. I love them. I worked with a guy named Mr. Sullivan, great modified teacher. Chuck Loria, another one. There are a whole bunch of them. Um, but it's kind of like you're calling. You, you, you just reach those kids. And I'd love to see these classes brought back. Now what, I could be a little wrong or off base on some of these things about what I'm gonna say. But what they were doing, they were starting to include these kids into the average classes with average textbooks, which they couldn't read. You get writing assignments. I was a history teacher. You try to give writing, ass writing assignments. You could do that with an average class or an honors class. But with a modified class, that's their other big weakness. They can't write. So there's a lot of oral stuff done. You, you simplify things. But you can still go into a lot of depth orally with these kids. I used to match up uh, honors kids with modified kids. We'd have debates. We'd get Supreme Court cases. And I'd pair them up and everything. And I'll tell you, the honors kids, they knew their stuff. Modified kids, they could tell you their stuff. And it was, a, it was just a beautiful blend. So you, you, you can work that way. Um, average kids. Uh, they're the kids that lose the most, I think, in public education. We do so much for special ed. We do so much for kids who have reading problems. Uh, we still have honors classes. Those kids get their select class. Modified kids don't. And I, I, I just think that's a, a big injustice. Um, you can take and have teachers cross subject areas. I know with my English teachers, a lot of times when they would do Anne Frank, I'd be doing World War II, and then we'd get into the Nazi concentration camps and stuff like that, and I'd show films. And you wouldn't believe the things those kids were writing when we, you could do it in combination. But you can't do that all the time because your subject matter is just, uh, you don't give you enough time to do it. I would also like to see the curriculum committee uh, sit down with the coordinators and go over the textbooks to sort out controversial things that may be in those texts. So you don't get stuck with another mistake. And then the last thing I gotta say, Robert's Rules of Order, I don't know if the chair actually has the right to, on her own, declare a recess or end uh, public speaking. I think a motion has to be made and you have to vote on it. Thank you. Ray Peabody. Good evening, Ray Peabody, 370 Washington Road, our fair town. A couple points I want to make. One is our teachers. Um, when I was on the board, I got to meet a whole bunch of teachers, and they're really <clears throat> a dedicated group of people whose careers are centered around teaching our kids, like Peter was saying, preparing them for vocations, careers, <clears throat> excuse me, college, or whatever it wherever life takes them. Like firefighters, police, paramedics, and others, they're not in it for the money. They're in it for the results and supporting those results. That's it. That's their life. Um, the other things I want to talk about is 
I've seen, come to meetings, seen on TV, a lot of people start off a phrase, we the people. It's we the people, dot, dot, dot. And English grammar, dot, 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 means a continuation. I like to just let everybody know what that continuation is. We the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves, our prosperity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. What I learned in high school, college, and reinforced by a 30-year Marine Corps veteran, Sergeant Major, who lived in this town, liberty is the guardrail of freedom. We're free to carry arms. Very, very sacred tenet, Second Amendment. But we're not at liberty to go and shoot somebody up on Main Street. We have freedom of speech, but we're not at free to call anybody a pedophile, call them, slander them in any way, shape, or form. We have the freedom to drive a car if we take advantage of the... Of, um, the privilege to drive a car in the state, but you're not at liberty to drive 75 miles an hour in a 25 mile hour zone. Next, last point I want to make is critical race theory, otherwise known as CRT. Critical race theory is a cross disciplinary intellectual and social movement of civil rights scholars who seek to maintain and examine the intersection of race, of race society, and the laws of the United States at the collegiate and university level. The CRT conceptual framework is, done, is just one way to study racial bias in laws and institutions. Now, I'm going to start way back when. It was a president of the United States that determined that Indian, Native Americans, had to move from territories in the Northeast and go out into the West. They walked. They called it the Trail of Tears because many people died on that. There are other incidences where race has been a primary factor in laws, a.k.a. Jim Crow. And that was written in Mississippi because freed slaves outweighed uh, the number of white people. That's a fact. Critical race theory is not teaching one race to be considered victims and one race, one race to be the perpetrator of those victims. And if any, I encourage people just to go out, do a Wikipedia search on it, and you're going to find out what I just said is fact. Um, that's all I have tonight. I'm not going to get into anything else. I want to appreciate everyone's work. It's volunteer. We all have day jobs. And I do want to thank um, Chris Dresick, Andy, and Kathy for the outstanding leadership they have provided during the COVID crisis. COVID, an unprecedented pandemic. And the reason why I read the preamble of the Constitution is because the group, the needs of the group, do outweigh individuals in some instances. And that is very important. I appreciate what you did, keeping the safety of our kids and our teachers in the forethought of your, of your policies. Thank you. Audiences is now closed. We're gonna move on to board member comments. Ms. Sakri, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. I didn't know if you had anything you'd like to say. Uh, yes. yes, good evening, everyone. Sorry, Sorry I'm, I'm not, not there. there. Feeling a little under, under the weather. weather. Uh, I don't have anything to report for Crandall, unfortunately. And I just wanted to say congratulations to all of the teachers um, who are receiving the award for Teacher of the Year. Uh, Teaching is a very noble profession, and I give the two teachers kudos for all their hard work and their dedication. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Akri. Dr. Kalman? Um, yeah. Okay, shall I start off with the Finance Committee? No, you can, Just, uh, you can do the Finance Committee when we get down to okay. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so you can do your other stuff. Okay, so let me just talk a little bit about uh, uh, the Stowe Early Learning Center. Uh, Jessica Elsevier El El from Child Plus gave a presentation of uh, something called DRDP, Desired Results Developmental Profile. It's a software designed to assess and track children's progress in Head Start from zero to five years of age. Uh, the program focuses on abilities rather than disabilities. Uh, it follows the progression of the individual child and also profiles group progress. The staff has to learn only one system, 
and only one user ID and one password will be required per user. Uh, this will eliminate the need to keep a variety of separate systems in sync. And the cost will be about $895 per child, and that's a savings compared to the current system. So the proposal uh, to adopt Child Plus was approved by the policy committee pending a favorable review by the teachers. Uh, it was decided that SNAP recipients will now receive a higher point rating to qualify for Head Start. Uh, enrollment and attendance as of May 5th was 82 percent, uh, which is really quite remarkable, remarkable considering that uh, Enfield, like so many other communities in Connecticut, is in the red zone for the COVID epidemic. Uh, in fact, enrollment for the last nine months has never dipped below 80 percent. So I think that's really a testament to our uh, Head Start program. The policy committee approved a 2.28% cost of living grant of uh, $21,916 from the United States Department of Health and Human Services to support staff salaries and fringe benefits. The Board of Education will have to provide an additional $4,383 in non-federal share contributions. Uh, funding for quality improvement has also been allocated for staff training in mental health management and promotion of language skills and literacy. Uh, there will be a summer program consisting of three classes to be held in July. This week, there will be a routine federal review of Enfield Head Start uh, to monitor program status. And on June 3rd, there will be an annual Head Start self-assessment involving staff, families, community partners, and uh, other stakeholders. So I'd just like to say a few brief remarks about KITE, and then I'll quit. Uh, <laughs> uh, KITE membership voted to accept the School Readiness Council recommendation. Uh, Amy Morales and uh, Cindy Guerreri talked about this the last time. Uh, there, the School Readiness Council recommendation that the OEC Quality Improvement Grant be awarded to ECDC specifically for on-site professional development and coaching, and to fund the 28 available ECDC slots. Uh, a kite equity committee has been created to plan for creation of an equity-related event. Uh, the Board of Education is well represented on this committee. Uh, David Bechtel is a consultant who has worked with kite on a number of projects over the years. At the last kite meeting, he reviewed the results of a self-assessment questionnaire completed by kite members covering the last 12 months, and the topics included COVID response, broad and inclusive collaborations, governance structure, membership engagement, strategic use of data, family engagement, town and district support, and community champions. And although the results were generally very positive, areas that might call for further improvement included inclusiveness of collaboration, and of greater clarity and development of future leadership and of committee responsibilities. Uh, strategic use of data is another area requiring attention. Uh, and lastly, I'm sorry, there is one more thing, <laughs> but I'll be very quick. I think we can report on that here, Dr. Dr. Palmer. You'll be able to report on it. That's for the, okay. the committee. Okay, and I will hold off on any further remarks. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kalman. Ms. Cushman? Well, this is certainly the time of year for programs that allow our community to really appreciate all the fruits of a school year of labor um, and the diligent work of all of our students and teachers. Um, on June 8th at 6 p.m. in Enfield, um, at the Enfield High Auditorium, Parkman is hosting their spring concert. On June 9th, at 6 p.m. in the Annex Library is a celebration of graduation for our adult ed program. And I did have the opportunity earlier to stop by the Pearl Street Library and just to really admire the work of Samantha Berry, um, very talented young artist and really a testimony of the strength of our arts program. And there was one particular painting that she had or, or picture that she had that was titled Memory that was very curious and I'm often um, often find myself wondering what the story is behind that painting and, and the title and what the memory was that she was trying to capture. But it was very a delightful display. And we're just appreciative of uh, the library for being able to display our students' work so proudly. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cushman. Mr. Hamry? 
Thank you. A uh, couple of quick things, and I don't want to jump too far into the agenda, but uh, that program at the uh, Pearl Street Library is a uh, – I'm glad to hear about the uh, the positive feedback, by the way, Janet. Uh, that's a collaboration between the Enfield Public Libraries and the Enfield Cultural and Arts Commission, so it's good to see that that's coming to fruition and that uh, Sammy has gotten some recognition for it. She's an amazing artist, incredibly talented, and comes from an incredibly talented family. So... Um, Couple things. Uh, the JFK. Uh, I want to throw some serious uh, props to JFK for their production of Moana Jr. This past weekend, it was an incredible production. Uh, the testament of uh, their efforts, their dedication, their commitment to making that production happen, while doing everything else that they do at a middle school level, was just incredible. Uh, more so to the point, it was so very inclusive. I don't remember the last time I saw a cast so extensive as that one was. And uh, that was just the back, the, uh, those that were on stage that I saw. I couldn't see the ones that were working behind the scenes to make it all possible. But again, that's the nature of the theater. And uh, they all gave everything to make that show possible. So kudos to them for a wonderful production. Uh, having said that, there is a, uh, an a, a effort right now by the JFK PTO to put together uh, some support for their students who have an Amazon wish list that they would like to have some support for for an upcoming event. And I apologize, I don't have the exact dates in, uh, available with me right now. Um, but it is available through the JFK PTO. If you visit the JFK PTO website at EnfieldPTO.com, you will be able to find that information and if there's any challenges to that, you can always email me directly and I will get that information off to you. Um, and I just want to comment uh, on the moment that I had earlier this evening as two previous Board of Ed members spoke here tonight from uh, positions that they've held in the past. Uh, I was in the room while they were up here at the dais and it's just a remarkable uh, context to listen to the uh, viewpoints of two previous Board of Ed members while sitting up here myself. So I want to acknowledge you for coming out to speak about that, uh, your concerns tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hamry. Ms. Pickett? Mm -hmm. All right, Josh, you stole my thunder about Moana Jr., but I'll, I'll quickly just chime in um, that it was so nice. I had a mommy-daughter mommy, <laughs> mommy -daughter date um, Saturday afternoon show and was blown away. Um, by the talent of everybody involved, um, the inclusivity. I also saw that too. Everybody was part of the entire play. Um, it was amazing. So, so thank you, JFK. Thank you to the students. Um, and thank you to the staff that also support that. It takes a lot of adult support as well. So I think that speaks testament to um, the amazing week last week that we did celebrating teachers and staff. Um, and I, I just want to to kind of share that. Um, another fun event that my family was able to participate was Friday. Um, there was a fun run at Enfield Street School. Um, a huge thank you to the PTO um, that put a lot of time and effort into orchestrating that, um, getting area businesses to donate to raffles. So thank you to all the area businesses, amazing raffle prizes. And thank you to the staff that stayed after school and came out. Um, as a mom, it just felt so nice to see some welcoming faces, meet some teachers um, and staff that I hadn't met before, um, and just really enjoy seeing children play and hula hoop and a great DJ. It was a lot of fun. Um, Parkman has some fun things coming up. Um, and I think, Janet, you actually covered that. Correct? Right. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> um, just seeing if there was anything that I... You got the spring fling dance and there's a yard goats game on June 17th. Um, and then a huge, huge shout out to one of my favorite paras at Stowe Early Learning Center. Um, she's also a track coach for Enfield High School. And the high school track and field is putting on a special little Spitfires track meet on Wednesday, June 1st from four to five at the track. There's gonna be throwing, running, jumping. It is free. Um, you can bring a canned good to donate to the Enfield food shelf. Please come out and have some fun um, with our track uh, st students and staff. Um, thank you for putting that together. Um, it's also, I have another flyer here somewhere, Enfield Unplugged Week. Um, I will tell you, we're not totally doing a stellar job at that at our, at our house. We're trying. Um, but really, there's an awesome amount of uh, events happening this week for, for families to be able to come out and um, be in the community and unplug um, for some time together. 
And then ERFC, um, summer camp info is out. So from June 27th to August 12th, from children entering grades K to eight, um, it's a seven week program at Prudence Crandall. Please check out their website for that information. There's also a volunteer program for high school students, um, a counselor and training program for grades nine through 12, um, really looking at how to develop leadership skills, learning to become impactful counselors and role models for young campers. Um, there will also be enrollment before, before and after school programming um, beginning in May uh, 23rd. So be on the lookout for that. I do have a couple questions about the COVID staffing and I don't know if I should wait till Chris comes back. I'm just thinking, Andy, you mentioned like we're anybody in it, like college kids. So how can we help and what's the process for like if we know somebody or like how to connect staffing? It's a good question. So are you, are you thinking like college age kids that are finishing things like that? So yeah. um, get them, get, get them to me and I'll take care of it. So they will have to be fingerprinted, but we'll cover that. Okay. Um, and we'll get them in as soon as we can. It just takes a couple of days for that to clear. Um, and we'll get them in right away. I mean, we have a real need for really just supervision at this point. Perfect. And it's almost like they'll, they'll come in as a paraprofessional on the paraprofessional mm -hmm. scale. So it's, yeah. You know, a little over $15 an hour. It's not bad money if you're just coming in and want to pick up six, seven weeks to finish the year out. So send. So if, you have, if you're a board member, you know someone, direct it to me. Maureen uh, at HR is actually out herself. So well, we're only down to like Chris and I and Kathy at Central <laughs> Office. <laughs> we're really that low. Everyone got every, Everyone who went over the Barnard mm. got it. Yep. So we're really, there's not a lot of us left. So send it to me and I'll, I'll take care of it. Perfect. So okay. I'm, I'm kind of yep. putting that out publicly that okay. in the community, if you are uh, getting out of college, if you are somebody who thinks you can go through the fingerprinting process and help out our school, um, making a call to action there because staffing is necessary, necessary for us to make it through the end of the year. And the last piece, and I just want to thank again, both the public speakers tonight, because I would agree with you, Josh, it's kind of a humbling experience. But the other thing that I noticed that I think is incredibly helpful is when folks come and speak, speaking in first person. So sharing your own experiences, not something you heard, not something you saw somewhere, read somewhere. Um, it really helps us better understand um, your experience and the impact that it's had, which helps us find solutions. Um, so that's just another little piece of feedback that I think it's not always going to be easy and comfortable. Um, but when we share our own experiences, it's much more um, helpful to be able to then find solutions. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pickett. Mr. Ungar? Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> so also, too, I'd like to thank the, uh, the two uh, former Board of Ed gentlemen who came up and spoke. But I also want to acknowledge that there is a third member of the Board of Ed who's here um, supporting this meeting. So. <laughs> Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, my liaison, School Hazardville Memorial. So the Hazardville, a really big shout out to the Hazardville Memorial School PTO. And uh, they did a whole lot for making the staff feel special and appreciated. On uh, Monday, they did uh, welcome balloons and hearts and uh, messages to the staff saying, thank you, thank you. Tuesday, potted flowers for everyone. Wednesday, they had provided them with some game tickets. On Thursday, it was an appreciation letter and coffee. And on Friday, it was a catered lunch from Country Diner. So that's great for the PTO saying thanks to the staff at Hazardville Memorial. And speaking about Hazardville Memorial, tomorrow, May 11th, from 6 to 7, in the Hazardville Memorial Courtyard will be um, blanket bingo. And I guess the weather's supposed to be very good. It's warming up as we go on in the week. So bring the family, set up your picnic blanket for some fun bingo. Uh, snacks and water will be provided and uh, feel free to bring your own picnic dinner there for the bingo. So encourage everybody to come out and support that tomorrow evening from 6 to 7 in the courtyard of Hazardville Memorial. Um, from May 2nd to 8th last week was the Children's uh, book week. Uh, May 24th to the 26th is the Hazardville Memorial School uh, Book Fair. 
And uh, on the 24th of May is the PTO picnic from 5 to 7. And that's that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ungeyer. Mr. Mr. Ryder. Um, so, yes, I apologize. I'm also in health and safety protocols myself. Um, just a couple of quick notes for um, Eli Whitney. Last week, they also had their uh, spring book fair. Families were able to shop on Thursday night and they had a picnic dinner and music on the playground. Uh, this morning, and this applies to all fifth graders, um, everybody went to go see the Moana Junior performance at the JFK. Um, so I wasn't able to go this weekend um, for health reasons, but for all that went, I heard nothing but rave reviews, and I was glad that our fifth graders got to enjoy that today as well. Um, tickets are also on sale for the Whitney Wolves Day at the Yard Goats. Uh, that game is Sunday, June 5th. Tickets are twelve dollars a person, and they're available on nfilpto.com slash Eli Whitney. The last PTO meeting of the year is coming up uh, next week, Monday, May sixteenth, and this is one I was excited to hear about. So, students were recently given a chance to read to write a persuasive essay about what they would do if they were principal for a day. Uh, the deadline was a couple days ago, last Friday. Uh, so now all the essays are being reviewed, and the student with the winning essay will get to serve as the Whitney principal of the day on Monday, May 23rd. Um, lastly, there's a lot of dates on all the Enfield PTO pages, um, and Whitney is no exception. Uh, field day, end of year activities, et cetera. So please check EnfieldPTO.com slash Eli Whitney slash HMS slash all of our schools for everything that we know of that's going on in our schools now and through the end of June. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Okay, I have a few updates. Um, again, last week, like we've all said, is Teacher Appreciation Week. Um, it was amazing to see what all the schools did um, to honor their teachers last week. I know it was a tough week with all the COVID outbreak, um, so it was, it was a hard week, but I, we really appreciate all the teachers. Um, in our district, you, you guys are, are nothing short of amazing. Um, actually, this week is Nurses Appreciation Week. So I'd like to take a moment to um, give all our nurses a shout out. You guys have been amazing. Um, you were amazing before COVID and you have been extremely amazing since COVID. Um, I know that you're tired and you've gone um, a lot of extra mile to help keep the kids safe and communicate with the parents. So, um, and I will wish my very own nurse a happy nurse's appreciation. Um, I had the honor, if, if you grew up in this town and you went to Fermi, um, I had the honor to go to a dinner for coach Ben Alex. He was a Fermi wrestling coach for many years. He impacted a lot of lives. He was actually inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Um, it was a really, um, a great night. It was very heartfelt. Um, there were wrestlers that actually flew in from around the country to see him um, that hadn't been back in Enfield since the late 80s. So it was, it was a really good night. So congratulations to Ben Alex. Um, his wife was uh, first a teacher and then a guidance counselor here in, in Enfield. So congrats to that family. Um, the boys baseball, uh, Enfield High boys baseball team, they had their senior night at Dunkin Donuts Park. I love that we get to do that. Um, they pulled out a win against Suffield. Um, the SafeGrad packets, they are rolling in. We're up to 55. Um, don't forget to get your SafeGrad packets in, and you can turn them into Ms. Nelson's office on the E-Wing. The senior prom is coming up on Friday, May 20th, um, along with the class picnic and class night. Um, like everybody's saying, these year-end events, I think, are all sneaking up on us, and calendars are starting to get a little bit busy. Um, I also uh, will take a moment to say that um, I was... I actually served with all three <laughs> board members that are here. Um, and uh, Mr. Genitis, I will say this. One of the things you always spoke about was the modified kids. Mr. T. Katz? Yeah. Four. Four. Sorry. <laughs> well, I didn't serve with Mr. T. Katz. <laughs> he actually just said that to me. Well, I didn't serve with Mr. Teacats. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get to serve with 
uh, the three members. Um, I guess if you're once a board member, always a board member, it never leaves. Uh, Mr. Janitis always uh, spoke about the modified classes. And one of the things Mr. Janitis never really um, was happy about, and I remember this from the time we served together, is when they closed Terra Nova. You thought that that was a phenomenal program. Um, and I'll never forget, you know, when you talk about that kind of stuff, um, you said that was your passion. You can see it when you talk about it. So I appreciate you coming and giving us your thoughts on that this evening. Um, Mr. Peabody, again, thank you for coming tonight, um, shedding some light, um, doing some research on the critical race theory and, and offering up some information on that. So I appreciate that. Um, and I think, oh, I have one more update, actually, a quick update, and it's for the ERFC. Um, the ERFC is having the Toast of the Town on uh, Friday, June 3rd from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Twin Hills Country Club. Tickets are on sale now. The Toast of the Town is an annual fundraising dinner to support the ERFC Summer Escape Camp Scholarship Fund. All proceeds raised will benefit children entering kindergarten to eighth grade to ensure they have a safe, fun, and enriching summer. Um, you can go out to the ERFCinc.org um, page and purchase, purchase tickets. And Madam Chair, I heard there's a great speaker that night. Is that true? <laughs> there's live entertainment. <laughs> Is that going to be you? You want to do both? <laughs> Uh, yes, I I will say that um, Connie Preventure asked me to be the speaker. I said no, but you, if you know Connie Preventure, there's no way you can say no to Connie Preventure. So um, I will be the speaker that evening. And the live entertainment is by Noah List, the voice contestant. So um, that's all I have. So we can move on. Unfinished business. BOE policy adoptions and policy revisions, second reading. Yes, yeah, so we, um, sorry, this uh, first reading passed unanimously at our last meeting. Um, it was regarding two policy revisions and two new proposed policies. Um, and I'll ask if you have any questions, but I may ask Mr. Longy to help answer them just because I don't know if I'm coming across well. Um, as far as the sound of my voice, I apologize. So I, um, that that's where we're at. It's a 4118.232. 5131.911, 3171.1, and 6140, and they're all included in your packet, um, again, for the second time. Do I have a motion to accept the second reading? So moved. Do we second. Moved. moved by Mr. Hamry, seconded um, by Mr. Ryder. Any discussion? Roll call, Kathy. Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. yes. Mr. Ungeier? Yes. Dr. Callanan? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Discussion and action, if any, regarding the formation of the Pizza Consent Assignment Task Force. So, um, so I can I can add on that. Go okay. ahead. So, um, since our last meeting, um, I reached out to a fellow board member Amanda Pickett, and we had a discussion about the formation of a, of a committee. Okay, and. Um, we we discussed that in the spirit of collaboration and negotiation about how this could look and how it could best serve our our community. And I mean, I will thank you for some of the words I'm going to use here. Okay, so so um, but we we are willing to work together. Okay, so I think that's important. And um, you know, I think we've developed uh, a, an initial framework for um, an advisory committee, and I'm gonna say whose name is still yet to be determined, but we've, we've developed a, a framework for that, okay? And um, that could uh, include uh, family members, parents, staff, possibly some community partners, and possibly even students where appropriate, okay? 
Um, we see this committee as being able to enhance family partnerships and engagement with the Enfield Public School System and our administration. And we can discuss um, uh, and, and review um, policies, both new and existing, and how they're implemented in our school system and find ways that we can share and review, look at curriculum, lessons, units, including sex and health education so that families are aware and can assist, okay? So with regard to next steps, um, I think we need to get um, with leadership, okay? And so that we can get some better definition about how we can select members for this committee and how we can better define its purpose, okay? Ms. Pickett, do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, I think uh, Mr. Ungheyer captured that appropriately. Um, I will say I think I reached out to you, but this is a joint effort, and I really want to highlight that um, because, you know, when we spoke, I don't, we're all up here for a common purpose of supporting Enfield Public Schools, um, and we can do best work when we work together. Um, and I do believe that there is common ground around family engagement and including family voice in the work that we do. Um, so we're starting from a place of where can we find some common ground um, and how can we shape this to be an inclusive, um, positively um, shaped um, stakeholder advisory committee, whatever we kind of move forward with, but there needs to be some additional support, um, I think, from administration, some input from staff and families, looking at what are existing kind of structures are there in place already. Um, so there's some continued work needed to be done, but we are on the right path is my hope. Does anyone else have any comments or questions about the update? Um, I, think, uh, I think the core of what you guys are saying is, um, it's really about the curriculum and being able to look at some curriculum and making the, the parents feel like a valued stakeholder um, because there's questions you might have about the curriculum or understanding you know, state standards and, and different things like that. Like why are we teaching some things um, you know, in the district and different things like that. So um, I appreciate you guys, um, your collaboration. I saw the emails back and forth you guys seem to be doing um, everything very productively. Sometimes when there's too many people, I just wanted you guys to work on it together. So I'm happy that you guys had the conversation that you did. Um, the question is um, that we spoke about is keeping this, um, this language on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, if we could, uh, modify that, okay, change it, so that it could reflect the collaborative effort between Amanda and myself of putting together some advisory committee. Okay, let's check with Kathy. Kathy, how would we have to do that? What you're supposed to do is make a motion to bring this item back on the table to continue your discussion. Okay, sorry, okay. So we need so a motion. Can I make a motion to bring this item back to the table regarding the formation of the pizza consent assignment task force? So, so moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Pickett, seconded by Mr. Ongeyer. And we should do a roll call. Okay, roll call. Josh, second it, right? Okay. No, Mr. John Ungeyer. I made noise. Sorry. <laughs> John, someone did. I knew it was. Okay. All right, so we're going to be voting to put this back on the table. On the I table, apologize yes. for that. So, Mrs. Pickett? Here. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> I'm here and yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. Mr. Ungeyer? Yes. Dr. Kalman? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. So now, like, reverse all that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'd like to modify the motion that's on the table now um, to... If, if I might, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, John, but I think this is... But we have to st stick with the one that's on the table now. We can't modify it. We have to d determine what's... Make a motion to accept the words here. Mm -hmm. Don't approve it. Everyone says no. Not that I'm telling you what to say. <laughs> you say no and it fails. So then it's off the table. Then you could make whatever kind of motion you'd like to make, if that makes sense. We would need a two-thirds vote, though, to make a motion. So, so are there any, excuse me, but are there, are there any alternatives to that? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can amend. No, you can't. Can you, you amend to, an existing? You need to either vote on this, yes or no. That's what you need to do. Then after this fa 
fails, then you can if make it fails, a new motion. Make right. a new motion. Right. Yeah. And then you would vote on whatever the new motion might be. Okay. Can can you correct. can you can you withdraw a motion? Well, since we tabled it, the answer is no. You could have done it that day. Once yeah. you tabled it, you cannot withdraw it after that. Okay. So you can, it cannot be withdrawn once it's been tabled. So could we then make a motion now to vote on this then? Yes. I'd like to make that motion, please. Second. Second. And who's your second? Just, uh, I'm just going to stop for a second for discussion. Um, so we take a vote on this. And then we can make another motion to get another agenda item on this evening to talk about our new task or our new committee that we're going to be forming mm -hmm. council. Then it's already on the agenda. We don't have to wait till the next meeting to put it on the agenda. It's already on the agenda and we can continue to work on it. That's my suggestion. Yeah. That it goes on the agenda tonight and then. So we can have a preliminary discussion on it and then like it can be a continued. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but I think the best thing to do is to vote on this, then we'll make first, and then we'll make a motion to add new wording to it so that it's already on our agenda so the work can continue. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I, I didn't hear any of this. Yeah, she said it keeps us accountable to keep working on it. <laughs> I'll say it louder. I'm okay with that. That was accountability. So the question is. <laughs> okay. Roll call, Kathy. Mrs. Pickett? No. Mr. Ryder? No. no. Dr. Kalman? No. Mr. Ungeyer? No. Mrs. Cushman? No. Mr. Hamry? No. Mrs. Acree? No. no. Madam Chair? No. Motion fails. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion to add a new agenda item discussion and action if any regarding the formation of a parent what did you guys did you guys come up with a name is it no, a, we just called it an advisory advisory, advisory council. committee advisory committee and then uh, we can we can work with leadership in in defining um you know and filling in uh, some of the gaps in the framework okay so so i have uh, a motion so moved do you want to make the second 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 by mr ongeyer now we can discuss so um, just if you wouldn't mind repeating that, Mr. Ongeyer, you were saying. So with regard to next steps, yes, um, we would we would then um, form more formalize our framework. So Amanda and I can work together and more formalize the framework, yes. make a presentation to leadership where then we can begin to uh, determine such things as a name for this committee and and then uh, look at uh, who we want to be on it, perhaps even select members to be on it. And um, and then go from there. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. Do we're not taking any action? So, but we have to agree that it's going. We have to take action that it's going to be on the agenda. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so make a motion to suspend the rules. <laughs> a motion to suspend the rules to add. So moved. The <laughs> Second. <laughs> game we play. Mm-hmm. Peter Janitis. I don't know these Robert's rules so well. Do you need a roll call, Kathy? Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go ahead and do it every time. Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Four. Four. Mr. Ungeyer? Yes. Dr. Kalman? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? <laughs> yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Yeah. Motion yes. passes. Now I'll make a motion <laughs> to add the committee, the parent, I'm sorry, the advisory committee to the agenda. Okay. So we'll do a roll call again. Yes. Because we already made the motion. Okay. Okay. We're just doing everything backwards. That's fine. That's okay. You're good at this. Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Four. Mr. Ongeyer? Yes. Dr. Kalman? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you both for your collaboration and working on that. And I'm excited to see um, what you guys will come up with that everybody can feel like 
they had valued input on. Thank you. Okay, new business, appointment of Enfield Cultural Arts Commission Board of Ed Liaison. Um, we are going to be adding a new liaison position to the Board of Ed, and it, it's uh, what it says, the Enfield um, Cultural Arts Commission Board of Ed Liaison position. Um, Mr. Hamry used to be on the actual commission, and um, he had asked why we didn't have a Board of Ed liaison along with uh, Councillor Santanella, and we thought it would be an amazing um, thing for us to have considering all the art and all the things that we have seen. So um, we don't have to make a motion for that, Kathy. I can just approve Josh Hamry. Okay. Um, congratulations, Josh. Thank you. And uh, one thing about that, um, this is a collaboration effort uh, with, uh, as you mentioned, Council Santanella uh, to identify that we have a very vibrant and active community of art appreciation in this town and some incredible talent that we draw to this town to participate in shows that happen with the Opera House Players, for example. Um, we have an amazing, diverse, and outrageously gifted group of students, both at JFK and Enfield High, that will hopefully be able to pursue their art and their passion beyond their school years. And uh, I'm very happy to be in the position to speak uh, to both the, uh, to all of the school's arts programs and as well to the uh, Enfield Culture and Arts efforts to promote what they've been working hard on doing and make the most of everything that is involved with arts in this town. So uh, thank you very much for this. I appreciate that. And um, if you if there's anybody with artistic extra, uh, expressions that they want to share, uh, please do that and and follow that. I appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, since we had started having alternates on the committees, if anybody um, is interested in being an alternate on this committee, I'd love to have you. So just let us know and then uh, Kathy can update the list. So just reach out to me. And the, my position on the ECAC does end as my appointment begins with the Board of Ed liaison role. So okay. effective with this transition. Okay. Yeah. But if anybody would like to be an alternate, if Josh can't make it, um, please reach out to me and let me know if you'd like that position. Okay. Discussion and action, if any, regarding the May 24th, 2022 Board of Ed meeting. Due to numerous conflicts, we're going to have to cancel that meeting, and I would like to reschedule the meeting for Tuesday, May 31st. Do I have a motion to cancel the May 24th, 2022 Board of Ed meeting and reschedule to May 31st, 2022? So moved. So moved by Mr. Ungeyer, seconded by Mr. Ryder. Do we need a roll call, Kathy? Roll call? Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Mr. Ryder? May 31st. <laughs> Mr. Hungeyer? Four. Dr. Kalanen? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Also May 31st. Mrs. Acree? Four. Four. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Action, if any, waiving the 181st day school day for the Henry Barnard School. So moved. Motion by Mr. Ryder. Second. Second by Ms. Pickett. Discussion? Just move it. No discussion? We got it. We got it. Okay. <laughs> Roll call. He Mrs. Found Pick <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mrs. Pickett? Yes. Mr. Ryder? Yes. yes. Mr. Ungeyer? Four. Dr. Kalman? Yes. Mrs. Cushman? Yes. Mr. Hamry? Yes. Mrs. Acree? Yes. yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion passes. Board committee reports, curriculum committee. We will start. There's not much of an update. Um, and before I announce our next meeting date, I am going to confirm um, with Michelle Middleton because I know it coincides with award night at JFK. Um, and we've been talking about tag. So I want to make sure that that date actually works. So I will get back to you on a date for that. All right, Finance. Finance, Dr. Kalman. Uh, finance. Um, so, uh, as of March 31st, the value of our TAG portfolio with Wolf is uh, 
$3,312,149.66, which represents a loss of $198,332.92 year to date. Uh, we met with Randy Saboski of Wolf Investments on May 9th, and we have been advised that our portfolio remains diversified and conservative, uh, with 60% with invested in equities and 40% in bonds. This 60-40 uh, endowment approach generally yields uh, a modest but safe 5% return on investment, and in our case, our return on investment to date is still slightly above 5%, uh, namely about 5.6%. Normally, our investment group would respond to a significant loss by increasing the investment in bonds. But because of inflation, the value of bonds have likewise been decreasing. And these losses are occurring across the board due to the current volatility of the market. For now, we have been counseled to stay the course and not make any changes in our portfolio. Uh, however, we have uh, advised the chairwoman of the curriculum committee not to increase the current annual expenditure for the TAG program beyond the customary $100,000 this year, most of which goes to salaries and supplies, uh, so that we can stay well away from touching our principal. Uh, with respect to the EPS Nutrition Services financial report, which we also discussed, as of March 31st, 2022, year to date, the total income was $2,052,966.81, Total deductions were $1,345,414.44, yielding a net profit of $707,552.37. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kalman. Policy Committee? Yes, hi. The Policy Committee ne next meets uh, next week on May 17th at 5.30. Leadership Committee, um, I would like to make it a point for us to um, get an idea from uh, both you and Ms. Pickett, Mr. Ongai and Ms. Pickett, on when you would like to present some stuff to the Leadership Committee. We can get that date on the book as soon as possible to meet. So. Joint Facilities, um, we have a meeting this Thursday, May 12th. JFK Building Committee. Uh, this, uh, is this is Mr. Ryder. I was going to ask if Mr. LeBlanc had attended. I was ill on Thursday when I met last. Yeah, Mr. LeBlanc isn't here yet. Okay. I'll see if I can get an update from the committee and report it at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Joint security. Next meeting is June 1st. Joint insurance committee. We're supposed to meet um, this Thursday, May 12th. Um, me and Ms. Akri are on that committee, but... Um, there's some issues with COVID, so we might be rescheduling that. I don't know if you saw the email yet, Ms. Akri. So tentatively, it's set up for this Thursday. The Enfield Mental Health and Wellness Work Group. Uh, the second meeting of the Mental Health and Wellness Work Group was held on May 3rd to discuss the most common mental health disorders uh, affecting Enfield children and adults as determined by a survey conducted by B. Wetland Smith Consulting. With respect to children in grades six through 12, the most serious mental health disorders were anxiety and depression. They almost broke even, actually. Uh, substances of greatest concern involving this age group were marijuana and alcohol. The work group broke into subgroups to discuss the leading factors contributing to these mental health and substance abuse disorders, and the results will guide the direction uh, the work group will take in developing an action plan. Uh, the work group will also tackle the special case of infant and early childhood mental health challenges. Uh, this approach will underscore the importance of relationships in addressing these challenges as well as reducing or ameliorating the impact of the so-called adverse childhood experiences that can predispose to the development of serious mental and physical health problems later in the child's life. And that's it. Thank you. I don't think we have any additional committees. We might soon. <laughs> um, approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to approve the regular Board of Ed meeting minutes from April 26, 2022? So moved. Moved by Mr. Hamry. Second. Second by Ms. Pickett. I have a discussion, I have a discussion point. point. Sure. 
Um, so I had two questions uh, for Kathy. I just wanted to uh, suggest two corrections before approving these minutes as written. On page 12, um, where it says, Mr. Ryder stated the Board of Ed members are liaisons to our schools, and I read the liaison assignments. I was reading off what was then an incorrect <coughs> assignment sheet, adopt a school. Uh, Kathy had corrected that and recirculated that around the town the following day. Um, so in the minutes, it, it does say Crandall is Janet Cushman and Parkman is uh, Gina Pre. Um, so although the minutes are correct, that is what I said, I was corrected. Um, and I was just wondering how to best handle that, whether we put the correct things in there or, uh, you know, the updated or not. So uh, that's my first question. I'll I can update pause that. There. Thank you. Kathy will update uh, that. Thank you. Uh, my second point uh, is on page 21 of the minutes. Um, item 13, approval of minutes. It says, Mr. Ryder moved, seconded by Mr. Ryder. Um, I we watched the YouTube feed, and I just wanted to let you know that Mr. Ryder did move, but it was seconded by Mr. Hamray. Um, so my name should not be in there twice, and the second Mr. Ryder could be replaced with Hamray. I was tired then. <laughs> it was a long night. Okay, I'll make that change too. Those are my only two amendments. So we move to approve. Yeah, so we're going to move to approve the meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Seconded. Show of hands. Hand <laughs> <laughs> Approval of accounts and payroll, Dr. Jerry. Uh, so first, the certification of expenditures. The Finance Committee met on May 9th, 2022 to review financial statements for the month of April, year to date, and to examine various documents related to finances. Our review concluded that there is nothing significant to report to the board. The motion is, I move we accept the superintendent's certification as follows. I hereby certify that in the month of April, total expenditures amount to $6,493,626.15, broken down between payroll totaling $4,468,869.18, and other accounts totaling $1,024,756.19. All payments have been made in accordance with the approval of the approved budget, excuse me, and are properly accounted for within the books of accounts. Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hamry. Show of hands. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Correspondence and communications. Oh, 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 sorry, more. that's my fault, sorry. <laughs> Certification of grants and Head Start expenditures. The Finance Committee met on May 9th, 2022 to review financial statements for grants during the month of April year to date and to examine various documents related to finances. Our review concluded that there is nothing significant to report to the board. Uh, the motion is I move, we accept the superintendent's certification as follows. I hereby certify that in the month of April, the total grant and Head Start expenditures amounted to $562,701.72, broken down between payroll totaling $447,129.61 and other accounts totaling $115,572.11. All payments have been made in accordance with the approved budget and are properly accounted for within the books of accounts. Copies of approval for check invoices are properly documented. Seconded. Second by Ms. Pickett. Show of hands. Aye. Aye. <laughs> the next item, correspondence and communications. Um, we got a formal invite to um, the Enfield Adult Education Graduation, which, which Ms. Cushman um, spoke about in her board member comment, comments, which is Thursday, June 9, 2022, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Enfield Annex. You have a little invitation in your board packet this evening. 
we have a need to go into executive session. Do I have an, a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Moved by Mr. Hamry. Second. Seconded by Mr. Ongeyer. We are now in, oh, show of hands. Aye. We are now in executive session and we won't be returning.